Hello everyone and welcome back again to the Linear Algebra component of the Calculus and Linear Algebra series. Last week we talked about some of the properties of the cross product and derived some equations to actually find out what the vector product or cross product is between two vectors in R3, as well as talking about the vector triple product and scalar triple product. And in this week we want to kind of look at all this machinery that we've developed uh, discussing vectors in Rn, more specifically in this one in R2 and R3, to discuss the geometry of lines and planes. So in this video what we're going to look at is we're going to actually look at the what is called the normal form of a line in R2. So in other words what we're going to try and do here is we're going to try and write down the equation of a line um, but we want to write down the equation of a line using some of the kind of mathematics that we've introduced about vectors. Uh, and why that's going to be useful is because well, hopefully you've seen this idea about the equations of lines before in a Cartesian form, but if we write it in this vector form, one, we'll see that this generalizes to kind of an idea of, of kind of lines and planes in higher dimensions, but otherwise, right, we can also generalize this stuff to, to lines um, in, in three dimensions as opposed to just in two dimensions. So let us maybe just recall uh, that the equation... of a line in R2 is given by, uh, so hopefully you know this, is just y equals mx uh, plus c. This is sometimes how it's written, uh, and we can visualize that in a picture about what these different quantities mean here. So we can draw on our kind of x and y axis. Uh, if we have a line like uh, so, if we draw maybe this kind of yellow line here, we can say this thing here is y equals mx plus c. The intersect with uh, the y-axis is the point C, so this point here is C. Uh, and the m quantity is the gradient of the line, right? So hopefully this is from calculus. We take delta y divided by delta x, uh, oh, sorry, uh, delta y divided by delta x, yeah, is equal to the gradient m. So let's make a note here that just uh, C and m are in R. So this is kind of a picture of how we would draw a line. And what we call this is otherwise known as the Cartesian form of the equation of a line in R2. It's clearly in R2 because we think of this plane here as like R2. This is kind of this whole thing here is we're thinking of as R2. Um, and it's Cartesian form because we're kind of expressing it in terms of x and y coordinates. And we think of this thing as somehow the x-axis and the y-axis. And that's what we think of as our Cartesian plane. Um, but there's another way in which we can think about this, and that is we can think about how to describe this by how it is orientated in that space. Um, in other words, we can, if we have these lines or this straight line in this space here, it's simply encoded by how it's orientated, right? It could be orientated like this way, or it could be horizontal, or it could be like this, or so on. In other words, that's encoded by the vector that points normal to the surface of this line up here. So that if we know this vector here, that would tell us the kind of orientation of our line. And then the only other thing else we need to know is whether or not it intersects uh, some or which point it intersects of the y-axis. So how can we encode that uh, in geometry? Well, let us consider or in using vectors. Uh, so let us consider um, equations. of the form, and we'll write it as uh, ax plus by equals zero. So in this setting, this is just a kind of special case of this one up here, uh, where we're actually lo only looking at the class of lines that pass through the origin. So these ones here uh, that we've got, we can draw these. These are simply kind of lines that would go through the origin like so. So this would be kind of ax plus by equals zero. And we see that because when x is zero and y is zero, that is indeed satisfies this equation. So uh, it must be a line that always goes through the origin. Well, we can notice using some of our kind of tools of scalar products that uh, this equation uh, can be written as n dot the position vector x, this is sometimes written as the position vector r in some literature, so I'll kind of make a note of that. So this is sometimes written like this, r in some literature. 
um, is equal to zero. Where, what we've we got here now, where n is simply going to be the vector a comma b and x is the position vector at the point x, y. In other words, it's just x comma y. Right? And it's fairly clear that if we just do the dot product with this thing, or kind of this vector here, with this vector here, indeed we get this equation up here. So this thing here exactly encodes the same as this equation. So we can think of the equation of straight lines that pass through the origin uh, can be encoded in equations of this form. And this is kind of called the normal form of that equation uh, of these types of lines. And what does it tell us? Well, we know from our kind of idea now about what, how we understand the scalar product that if we've got that uh, the scalar product between any position vector x and this vector n equals zero, it must mean that this vector n here is orthogonal to all the um, position vectors x on this line. So in other words, if I think of this as like this line above, I could take like this as my vector here x, and this would kind of correspond to this point here x and this point here y, and the normal vector, which I can maybe do in a different colour, would look something like this, which is orthogonal in the, or perpendicular uh, to this vector here, to this vector, this blue vector. Right? These two are perpendicular to each other. In other words, it's capturing this equation. So that's exactly uh, what I've kind of said before, that we can capture the information about a line in R2 um, via its normal vector to the surface of the line, which effectively encodes its orientation, um, and we then want this additional condition that how it um, relates to kind of which point it passes through on the y-axis. Well, for this one, in fact, we see this is somehow related to the right-hand side. Because here we were only looking at equations of lines that pass through the origin, in fact, equations of lines that necessarily pass through the origin must be of this form. But if we take a more general equation, so uh, more generally... If we take uh, ax plus by equals c with a, b, and c in R. So this now is an equation of, this is exactly the same as our form of y equals mx plus c. If you rearrange here, this is not necessarily the same c as before. It's just a different constant. Um, but if you rearrange here for y, we would divide through by b, and you can uh, take the ax to the other side. And you just effectively get, just by some redefinition of these constants, a, b, and c, uh, that it's exactly the same form as y equals mx plus c. So this is the most general form of uh, the equation of a, a line in R2 in the Cartesian form. Uh, then what would we have? We would have then n dot x equals c, uh, again, with n equals a comma b, and x is uh, x comma y. So now in this setting, n here, because n dot x is not equal to zero, right? we've got it equals to c and we don't know if c is zero here, uh, we can't conclude that this vector here, n, is necessarily uh, orthogonal to all the position vectors. And that makes sense, right? Because if we've got another line, if we think about this geometrically, if I'll draw a kind of small picture down here. Let's extend this and then like so. If I have a line now that doesn't go through the origin, if my position vector is something like uh, this one, let's say I'm looking at this point here, I could take this to be my position vector, then clearly the normal vector here, so if I take the, the, the vector that's normal to this surface, of this line, this vector here, these two vectors, the green vector and the blue vector, are not perpendicular to one another, not orthogonal. So that's why we have this thing here. So what is the equation? How can we write it in terms of kind of all our vectors here? How can we write this equation just in terms of um, kind of a vector form? Well, because that's true, this one is necessarily true for every single x, it must be the case that if I just picked one of the kind of one point P, let's say, so let's call this, uh, let's call this point here P, and this point P is equal to, um, say, P1, P2, in other words, its coordinates are p1 and p2. So if we take any point p that lies on this line, and if we dot it with the vector, um, sorry, we dot it with the vector n, that equals c, right? Because this must equal c for all value, uh, all values of x, where x is the position vector. So we, in other words, we can write the equation of the line. 
other words, uh, we can write the equation of the line as x uh, dot n, or we write as n dot x, it doesn't matter, it's commutative, is equal to uh, p dot n, where p is the position vector of a point p uh, that lies on the line. So in other words, in this picture here, if we use our red vector to describe this, this would be our position vector here. So this thing here, this red vector here is what we would think of as P. And what we actually see now is if we rearrange this, so rearranging gives, and we can factor out the um, N because of the account of dot product works, the dot product distributes over addition uh, of X minus P uh, is equal to zero. In other words, this vector here n is in fact now not orthogonal to all the position vectors x, but is orthogonal to all these vectors here of the form x minus p. And if we think about what x minus p looks like, x minus p is just going to be vectors that lie on the surface of this line, and indeed this vector here, this green vector, is indeed orthogonal to all those. So that kind of arrives at our definition now of the normal form of a line. So we can write a definition, these are in the notes again. The, oh, uh, let's write that in a different color. The normal form of the equation of a line, and it's sometimes denoted by this kind of curly L like this, uh, in R2, specifically in R2, we're only working here at the moment, is given by, uh, we write it as n dotted with x minus p equals zero, where exactly as we said above, effectively, where p is the position vector of a point p that lies on the line L, uh, and we specifically have that n is a non-zero vector, uh, is a normal vector for L. In other words, the normal vector is just saying that it's a vector that is orthogonal to the surface of this line, effectively. So all these, all these kind of direction vectors that we call them along that line. Uh, so let's have a look at an example now of how we can write a line in that form. So we have an example and in the notes uh, I've written it as so we let, well I've got consider the line L uh, determined by the equation We write in this kind of general Cartesian form as a 2x plus y equals 5. Uh, so writing this in normal form, or maybe we can just say straight away, the normal vector is given by n, which is going to be a 2 comma 1 in this situation, because that's the components here in front of uh, x and y and we can take a point p we can take a position vector p uh, as the vector 1 3 i've taken i've taken here but you can take any point uh, or any set of points that satisfy this equation so in this situation i've taken 1 3 because you can easily check that if you put x equals 1 in then i need to add 3 to 2 in order to get 5 so this is definitely a point or this is a position vector for the point that lies on this line because uh, the point 1 3 uh, satisfies this equation. But you could take another one, for example, uh, you could have taken x is 0 and y is 5. It doesn't really matter. Um, either one works. Uh, then 
the normal form of the line is given by we can write it as what do we have uh, n dotted with we would write this as x which in other words we can write let's, let's write it out explicitly this is x comma y minus the position vector 1 comma 3 uh, equals 0. You could, if you wish, uh, find the n dotted with this vector here and take it to the other side of the equation. That's perfectly valid as well. Uh, but this is also completely fine here to describe it in its normal form. So uh, I think that's where we're going to conclude this video. Uh, so what have we done now so far? We've talked about how to write uh, lines in R2 in this normal form, so using normal vectors and scalar products, so um, effectively. And in the next video, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the vector form of lines. So we're going to think about how to write these in terms of what are called the direction vectors. And we'll see how to write those in R2. And we'll see, unlike this one where we talk about normal forms that kind of only works in R2, in fact, this is going to be useful when we talk about generalizing to planes, the vector form of lines in R2 generalizes easily to R3. And you can even think about lines in higher dimensions. So you can think about them in Rn. So as always, I recommend that you read the notes after this video uh, or before and uh, attempt any of the problems in the module handbook pertaining to the material uh, discussed in this video. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.